chapter 2, page 6. We're going to classify stochastic processes in terms of what we call stationarity. But before we do that, imagine we have a finite set of random variables. ZT1, ZT2, and so on and so forth until ZTN. Since we have n random variables, we can define their distribution function with equation 2.1.1 on the bottom of page 6. Probability omega z omega t1 less than or equal to x1 dot 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 z omega tn less than or equal to xn. This is the general definition of the distribution function. And based on that distribution function definition, we can classify the process in terms of stationarity. Our first classification will be processes that are first order stationary in distribution. We say that a process is first order stationary in distribution. What that means is, in this distribution function, you just consider one, one of them, like zt1 and x1. This is equal to zt1 plus k, and we don't need a one there, by the way. And if this is true for all t and for all k, then we say the process is stationary in the first order. We say that the process is first order stationary. Or we could say that the process is stationary in distribution in the first order. And you can extend that to the idea of a second order stationary distribution. A second order stationary distribution is one in which you have not just a ZT1, you have a ZT1, a ZT2, and an X1, and X2. And if the equation on the top of page 7 on the left the cumulative distribution equation f zt1 zt2 x1 x2 is equal to f zt1 plus k zt2 plus k x1 x2 if this equation holds true for any t1 any t2 any k then we say that this process is second order stationary now you can see that this can be extended to the nth order with the equation on page 7 that's called 2.1.2 remember that n just tells us how many zt's we have so if n equals 3, that means we have a ZT1, ZT2, ZT3. If n equals 100, then we have a ZT1, ZT2, ZT, ZT3, going all the way up to ZT100. So it's just a, a way to uh, in which we can count how many of these random variables we have in our sample realization. And we also say that the distribution function that we get has n number of dimensions to it. Okay, so if n is 3, then it's a three-dimensional distribution function. Just like a 3D movie you go to is three-dimensional. So is an n-dimensional distribution function when n equals 3. So we're going to say that our process has a distribution function that's n-dimensional. And we're going to say that if our n-dimensional distribution function is time invariant, then we have a process that's nth order stationary in distribution. Okay, again, look at the equation 2.1.2 on the top of page 7. This shows that if we have this cumulative distribution function that you see on the left equal to the cumulative distribution function you see on the right, in which the only difference here is that the time is, is shifted by k. So you have zt1 shifted by k to zt1 plus k, zt2 shifted by k to zt2 plus k, zt3 shifted by k, zt3 plus k, and so on all the way up to ztn plus k instead of ztn. If the, the process has a distribution function. If it's stationary in distribution for any integers, any integer values of all the, the t's, t1, t2, t3, t4, t5, going up to tn, for any integer value of k, the time shift variable, and so, of course, for any uh, sum of t1 plus k, t2 plus k, t3 plus k, and so on and so on, until tn plus k, if it's time invariant, we'll call it nth order stationary in distribution. If you shift the time by k, or any value of k, and the distribution remains the same, then we say that the process is nth order stationary in distribution. Now, if a process is nth order stationary in distribution for any value of n, we say that that process is strictly stationary, or completely stationary, or strongly stationary. They all mean the same thing. We say it's strictly stationary. We no longer use the term stationary in distribution if that stationarity in distribution applies to all values of n. We would say strictly stationary. We wouldn't say stationary in distribution. Now, how about an example? Let's say I visit 100 houses in my neighborhood and I make note of what their thermostat's temperature is set to. So I'm thinking it's going to be around 68 degrees. I take note of these 100 temperatures from these 100 houses. I do some time series analysis, and I did determine that the process that I have has a 100-dimensional 
distribution function that is time invariant. Time invariant meaning it doesn't matter what any of the values of the t's are, t1, t2, and so on and so on, or the value of the time shift, which is k, or of course the sums of any of the t values with the with the k time shift. So t1 plus k, t2 plus k, t3 plus k, and so on and so on until tm plus k. And because of the time invariance, we say that the process is 100th order stationary in distribution. Now if I extend that study to 200 houses instead of 100 houses, and I find the same time invariance in the 200 dimensional distribution function now, this process, I would say that it's 200th order stationary distribution. Now let's say I go to my computer and I do some more advanced analysis and I figure out that regardless of the size of n, in other words, regardless of how many ZTs I have, the process is going to be stationary in distribution. So now I'm not calling it stationary in distribution anymore, I'm calling it strictly stationary.